So I'm going to flip to the jacks, right? So the jacks are a, an oral uh, a group, and jacks work differently. The, the, the circulating cytokines, IL-13, IL-17, IL-23, they're circulating around, and biologic drugs basically take, they're snipers. They take the right-sided runner and just take them out, right? That runner will never get around the track to pass the baton to the next person. They're out, they're lying on the floor, right? The JAK inhibitors allow that runner with the message, the baton in their hand, to get to the cell membrane and actually dock. It'll dock, and that cell membrane is that green wall. And it, it, under normal circumstances, that baton gets transferred into the cell, signals will go into the cell, the nucleus will be activated, the cells will reproduce. They'll be told to make more cytokines. They'll make clonal expansion. What JAK inhibitors do is allow the cytokine to dock, but the signal cannot transduce. The baton is dropped and the runner can't go. Right, so that's the analogy. The other analogy is just putting your phone on silent. It doesn't prevent me from calling you. It doesn't prevent the call from going through. It doesn't prevent the phone from actually receiving it and lighting up, but you don't hear that signal. That's what JAK inhibitors do. And they could be broad, like tofacitinib, which is JAK 1, 2, 3, and, and tick, it just covers everything. Or they could be more selective. And selective doesn't mean exclusive, it means preferential. So there's JAK1 inhibitors, and you see on, these, on the lower left, uh, JAK1 will shut down IL-4, IL-13, IL-22, interfere on gamma, all of the critical signals for atopic dermatitis. It is an excellent decision to block JAK1 for atopic dermatitis. Now, if you do JAK1-2, Barry does JAK1-2, ruxolitinib does JAK1-2, you start broadening that. You'll get a broader uh, immune modulation there. That's probably better for alopecia areata. It's probably better for some forms of eczema that really spill over, but you're also getting EPO erythropoietin. You're getting thrombopoietin. You're getting granulocyte colony stimulating factor. And ergo, the more you block, the more potential side effects you're going to get because you're going to start messing with critical functions that you don't want to. So let's look at the new JAK inhibitors that are uh, uh, essential for atopic dermatitis care. So this is upatacitinib. Remember, dupilumab is dupixin, um, uh, trelokinumab is adbri. As long as I'm saying it for all of them, upatacitinib is rinvoke, right? This was studied as a solo therapy, moderate to severe disease in adults, but this one also um, got uh, kids down to 12. Two dosing schemes, 15 milligram tab, 30 milligram tab versus placebo. 16 weeks is the end point, same end points as before, and then open extensions um, after that. And wow, we've never seen anything like this. Five milligrams per kilo of cyclosporin, no dose of methotrexate, no dose of the other drugs ever compared to anything like this. By week two, and four, week four, you have people hitting easy 75s. Their IgAs are getting clearer, almost clear, spectacularly fast. Same thing with um, itch scores. And by week 16, those curves are flat. Like all, it's all over but the crying by week eight or nine. They're really doing very well. And they're maintaining it. The only reason I showed you this slide is, you see the little AO over here? April Armstrong just blows this up in a great way in her talks, but uh, um, as observed versus multiple imputations. What this is saying is, let's look at the people who are in the study that keep showing up for the study. And this one is saying, let's impute some data because people are dropping out of the study. What happened to them? Did they move? Did they just not get better? Did something bad happen to them? And you notice when you impute the data differently, the data doesn't look always as good. But even this data, when you're imputing it, looks pretty darn good. The fortunate thing, since dupilumab had been around for a while, we had the opportunity to have head-to-head -head trials, right? You're going to have an oral come around, a daily oral, and your gut is like, well, people may not want to take the shots every other week. The oral's going to come around. You're going to need to convince people that this is really worth it. So they went head-to-head -head with dupilumab. 
you paracetamol at the 30 milligram dose, not the dose we ever start with. 30 milligrams is the high dose. 15 is the normal, typical starting dose. But all of these comparator trials use high dose compared to standard dose dupilumab at week 24. And then everyone at 24 weeks moves over to upadacitinib. And what do you see? You see for EZ75, right, a, a pretty good ba baseline uh, foundational endpoint, you see upadacitinib really tears it, right? And dupilumab's kind of slower, but given enough time, by three, four months, they're looking pretty similar. Right, that looking uh, like I'm not sure which one I, I want to pick there. Easy 90s, and those are really almost clear, barely perceptible disease. You see the curve start to split out, and completely clear, there's a bigger difference between dupilumab and upadacitinib. So the, the JAK inhibitor upadacitinib is really going to shine when you're looking at absolutely clear disease rapid onset. And then, the kind of interesting thing, remember at week 24, the dupey patients go to upadacitinib. You see like a supercharger here. It is a major bump. What do you think that's happening? They're on two drugs, right? The dupilumab's hanging around 80, 90 days, right? You dose it, you dose it every other week, but remember, you can dose it every four weeks, every eight weeks, still hanging around. And now you're right in the you patacitinib, so they're on two drugs, and it, it really makes a difference. We'll talk about side effects past this in a, in a minute. Here's a patient I couldn't budge on dupilumab. Atopic dermatitis, allergic contact dermatitis to nickel, lanolin, and fragrance. It's not easy for a young man to always avoid those things, or a young woman, right? It's just hard to avoid all of those items, and completely cleared on you patacitinib. Why? It was an effective AD drug, but it's also probably blocking some aspects of allergic contact dermatitis despite exposure because of the mechanism of action. So we have integrated safety data on upadacinib. Have you guys ever gone to um, like one of the dinner programs?